Hello and welcome to CSIT 208, Multimedia and Web Design. This is the first session for this course and it is the introduction to the Web 1. Creating a website with web pages that successfully communicate, educate, entertain or provide a venue for conducting business transactions require the application of good elements of web design. This course seeks to explain the basic elements of a good web design and students will be able to develop effective websites and pages targeted at specific audiences and for specific purposes. After completing the session, students should be able to, first of all, describe the internet and the World Wide Web. Students should be able to discuss ways to access the internet and the web. And finally, students should be able to categorize types of websites. The outline for this session is as follows. We'll first of all talk about the World Wide Web. We'll also talk about the users of the web. We'll talk about ways of accessing the internet and the web. We'll look at web browsers and their characteristics. We'll also look at how to access web pages. And then finally, we'll be looking at types of websites. Now we have a reading material for the course and students can find more information about what we study in this session from the first chapter of that reading material, which will be provided at the end of the session. We start with some background information and introductory terminology. First of all, we start by looking at what a computer network is. A computer network is composed of computers, printers, and data file storage devices connected together to enable the sharing of computing resources and data. Private computer networks are found everywhere, in our homes, in our offices, in student computer labs, offices of organizations, and businesses around the world. The internet is another terminology that we'll be using frequently during this course, so we need to understand what the internet is. The internet is a worldwide public network that connects millions of these private networks that we have defined in the previous slide. For example, on a college campus, the student's lab network, the faculty computer network, and then the administration network can all be connected to the internet. Now, this diagram is just an illustration of the internet having so many private networks that have been interconnected, and this is what we call the internet. Now we proceed to the World Wide Web, WWW, or the web for short, which consists of internet-connected computers called web servers on which are stored specifically formatted electronic documents called web pages. A web page can contain images, text, interactive elements, hyperlinks, which are links to other pages. A website is just a group of related web pages. And these web pages, as we have mentioned, are linked by what we call hyperlinks, which provide us a way of navigating from one page to the other. A website's primary page or home page typically introduces the website and provide information about the site's purpose and content. We have a second figure that illustrates the home page of the University of Ghana, Ghana's premier university. Now the home page seeks to provide information to audience. This is an illustration of a typical home page, and this is the home page of the University of Ghana website. A hyperlink, or simply a link, is a word, phrase, or image that connects web pages as we mentioned, we should be able to navigate from one page to the other. And the link that provides us with that functionality is known as the hyperlink. You can often identify a text link by its appearance. Text links usually are underlined or in a color different from the rest of the text. So on a web page, you'll be able to identify a link typically by the underlined feature. 
an image link might be more difficult to visually identify. However, when you move your mouse over such a link, the pointer will change from an arrow to a hand pointer. You can click on the link with the hand pointer. You might view the picture or video, listen to a song, jump to a different web page at the same site, or jump to a web page on a different site. Now, this tells us that you'll be able to provide a hyperlink that links you from one web page of a website to another web page of a completely different website. Exploring the web by jumping from one page to the other is sometimes called browsing or surfing the web. To indicate visually that you have previously clicked a text link, the color of the click text link might change. You can see this change in color when you return to the page containing the clicked link. Although the terms internet and web are frequently used interchangeably, remember that the internet and the web are not one and the same thing. As stated previously, the internet is a worldwide public network that links private networks. The internet gives users access to a variety of resources for communication, research, file sharing, and commerce. The web, a subset of the internet, is just one of those resources, as we have mentioned above. Today, friends, families, and business professionals exchange millions of electronic messages and share information using the internet and the web. Students frequently turn to the web to research topics for reports. The web is also accessed for entertainment, such as video games, internet radio, and movies. Businesses that interact with their suppliers and customers using the internet and the web technologies can be more productive and profitable. The internet and the web have significantly influenced the way the world communicates, educates, entertains, and conducts businesses. Topic two, ways to access the internet and the web. Users access the internet and the web using a variety of means. In the past, the most common way to access the internet was using a dial-up telephone line. Today, faster access methods, including digital dedicated lines, cable broadband, and wireless transmissions are increasingly the access method of choice for both individuals and organizations. The effect of internet access speed on web design consideration is discussed in the second session. Ways to access the internet. The following are the methods by which we get access to the internet. As mentioned earlier, the first one is telephone line access. Second means is by cable television. The third means is by a fixed and mobile wireless. And the last means is by using an internet service provider. Each of these means of access have their characteristics and cost implications. To view web pages, you need a web browser, simply called a browser, which is a software program that requests, downloads, and displays web pages stored on a web server. Web pages display differently across browsers. It is therefore necessary to test your web page on all modern browsers to ensure cross-browser compatibility. Now, what we mean by cross-browser compatibility is that information and display should be uniform across all browsers this is why we need to ensure that when we design our website we display it on as many of the modern browsers as possible so as to ensure that uniformity examples of current browsers are mozilla firefox safari google chrome and opera You can access a web page by entering its unique address called the Uniform Resource Locator in a browser's address bar. At a minimum, a URL, which is the Uniform Resource Locator, 
consists of a domain name and a top level domain designation. A domain name is a text version of a computer's numeric IP address. Now, why we need a domain name is just to be able to easily remember the name of the website we are visiting. Because technically, it will be very difficult for us to remember the IP addresses of each of the websites we will be visiting. An IP address is just a numeric address for a computer connected to the internet. A top-level domain designation indicates the type of organization or general domain, be it commercial, non-profit, network, military, and so forth, for which the domain name is registered. For some countries have their own top-level domains, such as .au for Australia, .fr for France, .ca for Canada, .in for India, and then .gh for Ghana. So these are examples of top-level domains as we have mentioned. .info, which is info for general information, .gov, which is for US government, .edu for educational institutions, post-secondary, and so on and so forth. .com for commercial and personal websites. In a URL, the domain name and top level domain designation are preceded by a protocol or a rule that specifies the format to be used for transmitting data. For web pages, the protocol is the hypertext transfer protocol, simply known as HTTP, which is the communication standard for transmitting web pages over the internet. You can type the protocol when you enter the web page domain name and top level designation in the browser's address bar. However, it is generally not necessary to do so. This is because most web browsers will insert the protocol automatically as the requested web page is downloaded into the browser. Types of websites. The types of websites that dominate the web can be categorized as personal, organizational or topical, and commercial. So we have three main types, which are the personal, the organizational or topical, and then the commercial website. A website type differs from a website's purpose in that the purpose is the factor that will determine the content you include in your website. Defining purpose is discussed in details in the third session. An overview of personal, organizational or topical, and commercial websites follows, along with the individual design challenges they present. The web offers unique communication opportunities for individuals. A personal website allows you to advertise your employment credentials, meet new friends, or share a common interest or hobby with fellow enthusiasts. Depending on your site's purpose, you might include your resume, we're going to talk about personal websites first. The web offers unique communication opportunities for individuals. A personal website allows you to advertise your employment credentials, meet new friends, or share a common interest or hobby with fellow enthusiasts. Depending on your site's purpose, you might include your resume, biography, email address, or a description of whatever you are passionate about. When creating a personal website, you might have limited software, hardware, and other resources. Working independently means you must assume all the roles necessary to build a website. This should tell us that there are different roles when it comes to building a website. Now, the second type of website we look at is the organizational or topical website. The organizations that can benefit from a web presence are endless. For example, if you belong to the Computer Science Students Association of the University of Ghana, you might volunteer to create an organizational website to promote member accomplishments or to encourage support and participation. Conversely, an IT professional, if you are one, 
might choose to design a topical website that is devoted to web application development, including tips for amateurs, sample code, and online resources. The final type of websites we're going to talk about are the commercial websites. The CEO of a large business enterprise and the owner of a small e-business share a common goal for their respective commercial websites. That is to promote and sell products and services. However, the design and content of a large enterprise's website might, might be much more sophisticated and complex than that of a small business's website. Both large enterprises and small businesses use commercial websites to promote and sell their products and services. Now, as I mentioned from the beginning of the slide, this is our reference material. Web Design, Introductory Concepts and Techniques, 3rd Edition, 2008.